and 10 years in the social justice space, um, working for a variety of nonprofits, largely working with communities of color, um, worked with um, the uh, Cuban immigrant community in Florida, trying to, as a, uh, with a labor union, trying to get a living wage for folks who are working these multi-million dollar condos and uh, was worked on a get out the vote campaign, campaign in the Houston community in Miami. A lot of community development groups that worked with the Asian um, communities across the U.S. Um, I pivoted from the nonprofit social justice space into tech, taught myself from web development and UX design um, before I started a, uh, created a startup three years ago called Diversity that was focused on connecting companies to tech talent from underrepresented groups. So, uh, you be and uh, host of a podcast called Choose Inclusion. Uh, our tagline is what happens when a blind guy, a woman of color, and a wannabe Latino get together to talk about how businesses can be more inclusive. And uh, hijinks pursue in that conversation every time we, we get together. Uh, so yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it to Mike to introduce himself next, right, Yubi? Beautiful, beautiful segue. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Mike. I am the token blind guy on the Choose Inclusion podcast. Uh, give it a listen. We're a riot. We have a lot of fun um, and uh, thrilled to be with you this evening. Perfect. Thank you. And, and now our special guests um, for this particular Culture First event. Uh, I want to introduce Il7 and Fat Track. Gentlemen, would you like to do kind of a quick intro? I've got two videos of fat. This is going to be. <laughs> you guys are on mute. What's going on, everybody? Yeah. My name is Fat Track. Uh, real name is David. Um, can you hear me okay? Great. Cool. Uh, I go by Fat Track, F A T and T R A K. Uh, I'm a music producer from Colorado, born and raised in Colorado. Um, about to relocate to potentially Hawaii, San Diego, or the Bay Area. Wow. You know, um, after all this mess is done, I've produced about five albums uh, to date. I have um, many instrumental albums and an album uh, in particular with uh, Bill Seven. And right now we're working EP, uh, zoomed in from six feet apart. Uh, that's that's the project that we're working on with with DU. I also facilitate in high schools, uh, elementary schools, junior high schools, um, teaching kids the art of music production, um, recording them, you know, teaching them about music business, uh, just showing them the ropes and all that stuff, um, and. I'm a sample-based producer, which means that I listen to uh, vinyl. I go through vinyl, and that's majority of the time that's where I, I get inspiration from. And yeah, so I, I, I know how to engineer now. I have, you, you see the microphones behind me, I have about two of them, which this is where, exactly the spot where it was seven records at um, all the time. And I, I, I engineer, I, I make beats, but I also produce the record and, you know, lend, a, lend my helping ear to, you know, benefit the album or, you know, product albums to that is sound quality wise and also um, delivery wise. So that's a little bit about me. Um, Pacific Islander mixed with uh, uh, a German and, and American. My family's from Guam and my dad is from... Hmm. America, but you know, I look more so Hispanic <laughs> than anything. I, you know, I don't really get Islander, but yeah, that's 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 me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, that's cool. So Hawaii, would that? I mean, you're kind of moving closer back towards home, but it, I mean, is that is that sort of the draw there? Is just you know that that kind of lifestyle, that kind of culture. Exactly. You know, it, it, it's the ocean. Um, you know, I was thinking about the Philippines, went to go visit the Philippines um, with my wife and, and my twin brother. And it's great, you know, but some some part of it, you know, it wasn't really, you could tell by the feet. My feet in particular, 
I have this saying, when our feet swell up and get really fat and big, the land is kicking us off. <laughs> so my, my feet literally swelled up bigger than my, it was like balloon feet. <laughs> You know, so I, my, my grandpa is from the Philippines. So, so I have Filipino in me. My wife is from there too. And, uh, you know, when we went to Hawaii, it, 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 our feet didn't swell up in, you know, Hilo or Maui. Uh, yeah. We went back to the, to the mainland in Guam, I mean, to the homeland in Guam, and our feet swelled up there too. So, you know, that just tells us that, you know, I, I'm still, I need the ocean, but, yeah. you know, I, I don't want my feet to swell up and turn into a balloon. Yeah, as soon as you said you wanted to move to Hawaii, San Diego, I was like, he's got to be native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 I have to go. That's amazing. Well, wait, I might follow you. I, yeah, Hawaii, this man is incredible. Incredible. Oh, yeah. Sea turtles, sea turtles. That's yeah. Thing, you know, All day. my twin brother and I, but actually, my twin just moved to Hawaii uh, in October. So oh wow! Cool. He moved from Colorado to there, and and um, you know, I I used to visit him frequently before all this mess, and we uh, cause my wife is a flight attendant, so you know that's how I'm able to just jump on a plane. But you know, yeah, no, that enough about me. Seven. <laughs> <You're dead. laughs> yes, Mr. Awesome. Seven. What is going on, y'all? Uh, Il Seven, aka Cunha Black, uh, Michael Bacunha. I got a lot of AKs, um, <laughs> variety of different meanings, you know, different spiritual journey. Um, but just a little bit about what I do in my work. Um, I'm actually um, a facilitator of a variety of different styles of workshops. Uh, some of the work that I do with emotional development and also implicit bias. Um, and then as recently uh, tracking myself, have been uh, building out workshops that engage narrative with young people, college students. That's kind of what we're doing with Denver University right now. Um, and in the workshops that we're really developing out, really dive into self narrative and the ways that we see one another in the world. So we utilize music to kind of explore these ideas. And within exploring these ideas, getting people to focus on themselves first um, as they're kind of exploring these biases that they may have around a variety of different things, around ethnicity, around um, gender politics, around uh, LGBTQ. And, and in some of these ideas, we don't even know we have inside of us. Um, and I feel like art and creativity is a great way to kind of explore these ideas. It gives you a chance to be comfortable within um, whatever that narrative may be. So uh, I'm in the past, I've worked with the Office of the Independent Monitor um, and the Citizen Oversight Board. Uh, both of those organizations are um, organizations that do investigations with the Denver Police Department. So they have internal affairs. The Office of the Independent Monitor is uh, a citizen um, communal representation of what's happening as uh, part of the investigation. So if there was some misconduct that happened to a citizen, they can report it to the citizen oversight, or they can report it to the Office of the Independent Monitor. Um, and then with, what I did with the network was outreach, communal outreach. I did a lot of conversations between officers and community members, officers and young people and high schools. And the idea uh, of the work is to um, break bias uh, by, by having conversations, right? Have ideas. Uh, and, and instead of just holding on to these ideas, let's talk about it. And let's see why we feel uncomfortable. And let's see another person's perspective. Uh, and that's the base of what uh, that work is. Uh, and I've also worked, me and Track have uh, both worked with uh, Youth on Record. Uh, it's a, a music program organization in the city, a nonprofit uh, founded by the Flowbots. And we had worked with them for, I've worked with them personally for uh, 10 years. And um, uh, Fat Track and I uh, kind of developed a lot of the ideas that we're currently doing within tribal ciphers, other things on record, you know, in the curriculum that we developed. So, um, yeah, so uh, what we're going to be doing today is kind of diving into our album, uh, Crates of Vintage Dreams. And the idea of Crates of Vintage Dreams 
uh, really came about because of my own personal background, uh, similar to Travis's birth, dad from Haiti, and my mom, uh, her family from Mexico, and she's mixed with black. So, you know, I come from a very Afro-Latino background, uh, last name being Acuna. Uh, and, you know, within my last name, I, I actually made it my name. So Acuna Black. Uh, and the idea of Acuna Black really came about because in my family, we're so mixed. Uh, I'm one of the darkest ones in my family. So it made me really think about, like, you know, being a black sheep, but also um, the complexities of what it is for one to be black. And um, we have a very linear way to see and seeing black, but like there's a lot of colorism that happens within the black culture. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, even financial and, um, you know, uh, breakdowns that end up impacting our community in a variety of different ways. People who are prosperous, who have any, a variety of different things that happen in the black community that is very nuanced. And I talk a little of uh, the history of, of the journey of uh, Black culture from our indigenous roots, uh, and also talking about my Latino indigenous roots. And, um, you know, within Trek and his background and really being from the island, really kind of uh, you know, meshing this whole indigenous narrative of what it is to be just, you know, indigenous and really what hip hop is as a culture. It's an indigenous art form. It comes from beats, you know, which represents the drums, uh, the griot in West African culture. It's a storyteller. That's the way that they passed it down in Mali. If you, if you do any study on Mali culture, uh, West Africa, the griot, uh, they're the ones who always tell the story. They're usually musicians, poets, uh, very hip hop. And then, you know, connecting graffiti and the dance. So we take a, uh, connect that to the hieroglyphics and the ways that, you know, we know what happened in culture and the story, and even the complexities of graffiti uh, and how to read it. Like, you have to understand how to read graffiti to understand it a lot of the time. Uh, and then, you know, within the dance and uh, hip hop within the b-boys, really connect into capoeira. Uh, it's a variety of different indigenous dances that you can find within hip hop. And the fact that it came from New York uh, at a time where they didn't have any instruments and there was a lot of gang fights. Uh, hip hop was actually the cure uh, for a lot of the violence stopping in New York, um, just because people connected to art and creativity. And instead of fighting one another, they would rather throw up a burner or do some b-boy dancing or write a song or make some beats or learn how to DJ. So hip hop has always been something that has kind of engaged social uh, social change, social activism. You talk about it a little bit into the roots in the culture of it. And that's with anything, you know what I'm saying? Even in reggae music. And that's another thing. Hip hop is very influenced by reggae music. Uh, when you're talking about like uh, the beats and even toaster. Toaster is a way of spitting in, in, in reggae. Like they have the toasters that spit real fast, uh, do a lot of fast rapping. Uh, I say spit like, like y'all know what I'm saying. So I'm like spitting means rapping. So when I say spit, that's what I mean. Like, oh man, he's spitting some ill bars. I know that just sounds like a whole nother language, right? I just said he raps really well. So, so you know, that's hip hop culture. You can have a whole language, you know, and within that culture. So, tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to play a few songs on Praise of Vincent's Dream and then actually get you to kind of dive into the experience of what we did in creating it by writing some lyrics and breaking down the beats, you know, and talking about the context of um, did you have before we went into the performance? Did you have some uh, things you wanted to touch on before we uh, went in that direction? Yeah. So I, what we wanted to do, um, so Mike, Nina, and myself, we were going to do because you touched on this. You talked about, um, you know, un better understanding ourselves, right? Like using music and lyrics to better understand how we think, some of our biases. Like how do we? how do we understand, you know, and, and approach a lot of those things. And so what we wanted to do before we got into the performance was kind of walk through our, you know, how, um, how, uh, how our biases work, how our brains work, just sort of the baseline understanding. 
of that so that going into then the performance and then the the exercises with you guys we can we have a little more open mind right uh, we understand what we're getting out of it so we're going to dive into that for just a few minutes and wow. then we'll come back into the performance is that cool that's awesome yeah all right, let's do it. So I'm going to share my screen here. And Nina's going to kick us off. So we, um, there, uh, there's some cool exercises that we, we like to do, not only internally, but we like to share them. And, and hold on, I need to let someone in. Yep, there we go. Um, and by the way, from an interactive standpoint, so th this is going to kind of kick off the interactive aspect uh, of, of this and it'll teach us some cool things about zoom that we like to teach um but also feel free to use the chat or jump in you know we're a small enough group that i think we can uh you know we can all chat together on here so if you ever have, have questions while we're going through a lot of this stuff feel free to 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 jump in and stop us and read uh, those questions but, yeah, i turn it over to you all right, so yeah, the traffic light check-in. This is actually something that um, is a way to uh, kind of get a baseline understanding of where people are at, kind of emotionally and physically, whenever you're starting a meeting. Um, and the goal is not really to necessarily be a touchy-feely type thing, it's really more about starting to activate empathy um, by understanding where people are at. And so the first, uh, so basically at the traffic light check-in, people just go around the room and they say whether they're green, yellow, or red. Green just means like, I'm 100% present, I'm ready, I'm good to go. Yellow means like, I'm not doing that well, but I'm, I'm definitely hanging in there. Red means like, I got a lot going on and it's really hard for me to like, kind of be like present today. And red, yellow, and green can mean different things for different people, but what's really important is that you're just communicating to others where you're at. So we can give each other graciousness and also allow ourselves to be vulnerable at the same time. So uh, what to do when we kick off Zoom meetings is to rename ourselves um, and, and add our, our preferred pronouns along with which color we are. Um, so you can do that by uh, clicking on the participants list uh, and then there's a more button next to your name and you can actually rename yourself. So if everyone doesn't mind just taking a moment um, and renaming themselves with their pronouns and what uh, color they are. You can also click the little uh, three ellipses button in the right top corner of your video screen to do the rename function as well. Awesome. So now a little trick you can take back to uh, your, you know, your communities, your organizations, your family. We've had family members, team members, you know, who take this back to use with their kids. You know, like just a quick traffic light check-in, it really goes a long way to starting, like Nina said, to build empathy. So, all right, we're gonna, I wanted to jump in real quick to introduce, you know, what, what culture first is. Um, a culture first community is is this you know it's that we're trying to help build a community here in Denver of like-minded people who you know are are really focused on building a, a better a better place to work at, you know a more inclusive place to work where everybody feels like they can be themselves and be authentic and belong and contribute um, culture amp is you know is all about driving this this community building through the culture first chapters like denver um and so we're just really happy to be a part of it um these are the core principles of culture community we just like to go over just to kind of set the stage one is foster belonging and acceptance um two willingness to reflect and grow you know i think I think that's why a lot of us are here is just the, the opportunity to learn and be, you know, educate ourselves and be better. Um, have the courage to be vulnerable. Like we want this to be a safe environment. We want this to be a place where people can say what they need to say um, and share what they need to um, put the learning into action. That's the biggest thing for us is, is, you know, especially right now with the conversation around black lives matter in systemic issues and systemic inequalities it's like we need to take action right 
There's no, it, we can't be performative anymore. We have to do something to see that change. Um, you know, and then it's just all about connection, right? Like, and, and helping each other grow, uh, grow our businesses, our connections, our network, our community. Um, we talk about in out groups and it's, you know, how, how, how can we redefine who, who is in our in group, you know, who we feel comfortable with, who we associate with, how do we grow that and expand that beyond what we have known our entire lives. So that's culture amp and, and culture first. We thank you for being here. Um, all right. This is the first interactive exercise. Um, what, which one do you prefer? Just quick off the top of your head. And feel free to unmute and just chime in. Cattle. Cattle. I'm not in any lays. <laughs> <laughs> right? And what about this? What about Crunchy Vegan the... over here? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What about um, what about which one's healthier for you? Kettle, sea salt. Kettle. I think I, I, I that one is healthier or the other. I don't. Is one of them organic? I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> well, so I'm glad you bring that up because it's you know yeah right there on the on the bag it says organic, but if you turn these around and look at the ingredients, right, they're pretty look much about the, same. the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> You know, and the point that we, the Mine. point we want to make there is that, you know, we all have these preconceived opinions about things, right? And, and those come from, a, those come from how we grew up, you know, I grew up with Lay's, but I do like cattle, but I know neither of them is really good for me, but that's because I did a little digging, right? But most of the time, that immediate answer that comes into our heads is that preconceived opinion. And whether that's based on facts or not, we'll get into in a second, but um, Nina, do you want to, here's, here's the second one. This gets pretty contentious. So here we go. So, uh, oh, wait, there's a little, yeah, go ahead. Or, uh, Apple or, or Android? Apple. Android. I'm an Apple. Oh, this is a big identity Android thing. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Apple, cast, what do you, do you use? It goes away. Yeah, <laughs> it never pops back up like a like a you know a a, a, a Microsoft Windows or a, to me an Android. It's too confusing. You got a very biased. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and uh, Turquoise, you brought up a good point about identity because I think what happens, what we see happening now is that, you know we take these these inclinations, these prejudices, these opinions that we have of things, and then we start layering them onto people. Um, and that can be, that's where bias starts to become pretty dangerous, right? Is, is in Silicon Valley, for example, people, as, people associate creativity with people who have MacBooks. Yeah. I used Mac, to work at Apple. You know. so. oh, yeah. I used to work at iTunes building the back end. So oh, I can tell man. you, and, and even a little bit of time at Google. So, uh, yep. <laughs> uh, I hear you. So the you whole, know, the right? whole like, area is like the Silicon exactly. Valley. Exactly. The whole area. It's, it's crazy, right? And and but but we start to associate and take those things, those opinions, and and now people reflect like we, we push that on to other people. Yeah, exactly. So and well, um, all tied into that socioeconomic oh, yeah. status, just brrr, even how good your music will be production wise and how fast you can do stuff. Yeah, all that's a great point. Things. All your I mean, programs that you're able to use. Oh, it's insane. It's insane. And, and so now you can see sort of the problem, right? Like this is such a layered issue and, and why, why we talk about bias in the way we do. But, you know, what, what we really want people to do is just, just being honest with your about your own biases. And so we're going to go in, we're going to jump into what, what that kind of means from our perspective. Um, so let's see here. This is kind of a new deck I'm using, so I'm getting used to it. All right, Nina, let's do this. And Mike, Mike Hess, if you're ready to dive in. All right, Nina, I'm gonna let you go with this one. 
All right, but uh, so I'm gonna caveat this one because I actually, I think that there's a really interesting take on this and I think that's why it's really great that Mike's here. So when you look at this slide, the five senses are highlighted, right? Um, you mean there's no text on this slide? <laughs> yeah, it's going. Uh, okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, just, just quickly looking at it, which sense is taking in the most information? Is it the skin? I can't. I'm on my phone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. You might have to zoom in. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it's, it's the, the eyes. 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 Yeah. Our eyes. Yeah. Um, so it's our brain funny. is taking all this information in, right, from all of our senses. Yeah. Um, but people with sight uh, rely almost exclusively on their eyes for most of the yeah. information that they're pulling in. Um, and this definitely impacts how we're perceiving the world, right? If we're using our eyesight to process information, then what we see is also going to be the thing that starts in this journey of triggering bias, right? Um, but yeah, Mike, I, I'm curious to hear your take on it because as a blind person, you might have a very different take on this, so. <laughs> Mike, you there? <laughs> Sorry, I had to two whiskeys in. No, no, <laughs> only, only, only two. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, actually, well, so I mean, the the hierarchy is um, uh, is obviously visual, and since I had sight uh, as a young person, it's not that I still don't have the ability to visualize uh, things. However, uh, you know, focus is 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 also determined on uh, a, a kind of a mind mindset, right? So you can, you can absolutely focus using other senses. If, you know, again, one very simply, you like, you could, you can focus on listening super, super well, just by closing your eyes. Like it's not, it's not, it's not a blind person thing that, you know, they can, they can listen better, but they, they have practice on that focus. So it's, it, it really is a, uh, it's, it's a skill that people can, work if you are uh, if you're working on that focus skill mm -hmm. yeah and that that that's a great point too i think that that kind of plays into the overall goal of what we wanted to talk about is as it relates to curiosity but thinking of bias as a code in our brain so the first point of input are our five senses those with sight that they get the most from that so you can imagine information overload. But to Nina's point, like our brain doesn't process all of that information, right? Like how could it at its baseline function, just like a computer, it, it can't. So what happens then is you start layering in these internal and external factors, like parameters, right? We're putting parameters around the data and, and how we're how we're supposed to the process data. So thing Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that's sort of our psychological and physiological needs within ourselves as individual human beings. And then you've got the environment around us, which includes our family, our friends, you know, where we went to school, our church, our our team, you know, our coworkers, all of that starts to then define these parameters that wrap around the data that's what the data then gets pushed through and that you know that that's what starts to really shape our biases at a very young age right since from day one yeah so like you take it to the next step right you have this information overload plus personal experiences our brain is just looking for efficiencies all the time. It's just trying to figure out like, okay, there's only so much energy we can use in a day. And it, our brains take up a lot of the energy. But our brain learns like this, that's the only way we can process the, the, the volume of information that's coming in. And so these shortcuts are essentially like file folders. What we've, what our brain is constantly doing is like creating a categorization of things and then taking whatever information we have and putting it into one of those categories. So for example, like if we go into like evolutionary biology, 
you know, anytime you see a flying insect that had a yellow and black striped body, you know, our, our sensors go off saying, hey, that thing's going to sting me. Now, we know that not all, like consciously, we know that not all yellow and black insect, insects are going to sting us, but we've learned that that's a good file folder for the ones based on the experiences we've had and what we've been told. And so that is like a survival mechanism that we have actually brought into our modern world. Our brain is always putting things into folders. Any information that we see, we immediately categorize it because it's just the easiest way for our brain to take shortcuts to processing the sheer volume of information that's coming in. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, the goal ultimately then is how, how do we fill up those file folders with more information? How do we expand our understanding and our knowledge of people, things, places, ideas? So one of the things that gets in the way of that and, and where bias starts to exert itself is the fact that the part of our brain that really manages emotional and physical pain also manages our behaviors, our social, you know, our social uh, interactions um, also handles uncertainty. So in the brain, uncertainty equals pain. Like it's just that simple. So everything that our brain uh, its baseline function, again, to Nina's point, going back tens of thousands of years, survival mechanism, is our brain is gonna do everything it can to ease that uncertainty because it equals pain. And it does that by making up stories, by creating stories based on the information in our file folders to keep our brains from just spinning out of control when confronted with something that's uncertain to us. So like if we see, if we walk into a place we've never been to before, we see a person who doesn't look like us, like our brain just goes into overdrive. And so to settle that, it creates a story. And that's, that's bias. And it's very automatic. That's like our baseline brain function. Mike, I'm curious uh, from you. So without sight, what, how does, how do you know if you're confronted with something when you're walking, for example, is that a constant feeling? Well, so, you know, biases are with, uh, associated to all the senses. Like, so some people, if they feel uh, like a peach, they actually get, you know, tingles. They have an, uh, an adverse reaction to the feel of a peach, right? Like, so that's a bias. That's, that's a neuroscience, a neurosensitive bias. So, um, right. and I've said it before that I absolutely have audio biases too. So, and I've, put my foot in my mouth uh, before and I'll do it again. So when I hear an accent from somebody from the deep South, I immediately think of the movie deliverance. Um, and so that is a bias. Now I've, right. I've learned to uh, not say that uh, too often, too loud and in uh, social media settings. However, uh, <laughs> it is, it's, it's, it's something that happens. Right. And so nice and with judgment that bias is just that's awareness so it's understanding you know what you know when when you see hear touch and, and you're having some kind of that funny feeling understanding that uh it's good to then be aware and to be able to analyze yourself on that i mean it happens with all senses yeah now and, and that's that's a great point and i think um where you know this next slide takes us to the you know once we understand this this equation here uh it, it it becomes paramount that we learn to use all our senses to take in information you know um so i'll summarize this and then i have a question for mike but so yeah information overload all the external and internal factors the fact that our brain at its base function processes in a very limited capacity uncertainty equals pain is what it's response. And being aware of that then gives us an opportunity to, to consciously and intentionally gather more and more information to fill our brains up. And so, so Mike, have you, like, so 
your other senses, your touch. I mean, you've kind of had to train yourself to, to take in more data through your other senses. Right. I mean, and, and I mean, would you agree that that for like for people with sight that we have to do the same? Well, it's again, it's it's a matter of focus and our brains are very, yeah. uh, you know, um, uh, like you can program your brains to do amazing things and they've they've actually put uh totally blind people under brain imaging technologies to uh when they're like um using tactile uh these visual in the back of the brain actually will show um it'll light up even even though the visual cortex is is not being used the brain has an amazing capability of then just it it you know creating new neural pathways right so we, it's not right. it's not a brain limitation it really isn't like our our brains will do what we help uh it focus on and that's why i say it's a, it's a matter of focus like we can we can truly eliminate um or mitigate let's let's just use that word mitigate um because eliminate seems really like out there but we we can mitigate a lot of our visual immediate uh, biases that we have, if we start, you know, really uh, attempting to focus using other senses, you know, again, I, and I've used this yeah. example before. And if, if uh, you, you again, close your use the, the, and Malcolm Gladwell's blink book talks about the blind, the true blind audition process and how it truly is effective at getting so again, and it's taking the visual information away. Like so, it it works if you work on it. I love that. I love that. And yeah, I think you know, just to tie it all together before we uh, before we turn it over to Fat Track and 07, you know, it's one we want to level set, right? Our brains work the same at the baseline function of our brains, all of us, that means we're all biased. Doesn't mean we're broken, you know, it just means that we are human beings and that's the one thing that truly connects us. And the more aware you can become of your own biases and how your own brain works and behaves when confronted with those biases or triggered by those biases, to Mike's point, like you can absolutely train yourself to better. We won't get rid of the bias. We can't reprogram that baseline function of our brains, but we can absolutely choose to be better. And so that's why I'm excited about today. Uh, we're going to turn it over to the team here. They're going to do a performance. And then, yeah, the hope is that you can all walk away using, being able to use music and, and lyrics to help you on that journey of training your brain. And, and training yourselves to, to be more aware and, and to be able to make better decisions. So team, I hand it over to you. Any questions while they're, while they're kind of getting, finishing getting set up? Can you hear me okay? Hey, Jasmine. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, my video hasn't been working, but um, I just wanted to quickly kind of uh, tune in and talk about how um, having an injured brain. So it's it's interesting because like I'm I'm hearing how our brain operates, and I what I'm trying to say is when we when we kind of work through these ideas and we put it into realization how many people walk around with brain injuries or you know concussions and and how that affects all of this into reprogramming and just learning about the brain in general because it's such an interesting organ that stores so much you know, so, so many experiences. And so, you know, I don't know if I'm asking for like a whole other, you know, brain synopsis of understanding even deeper, like how we can literally change our brains. 
and and not be so you know succumbed by these biases. Now, yeah, thank, I mean that's it's actually something I, I hadn't thought about. Um, I don't know. Does anybody have something while I kind of think about that myself, Nina, or anybody, or I mean, turquoise? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say that um, a significant amount of the population functions in the daily with trauma in their brain. If we look at the ACEs study, the Advanced Childhood um, Experience study, we can see that a good, a significant portion of us are are functioning in this subconscious. Um, mode that is it is on autopilot so i think cool for to uh engage with is a uh, spiritual practice or mindfulness so that we can use these um these tools to expand that capacity so whether we're dealing with depression or anxiety or any anything that's not neurotypical uh traumatic brain injury um all of those things are going to inhibit our capacity to enact our, our uh, frontal cortex away from our amygdala. And so I think that there are multiple processes, spiritual practice like uh, mindfulness, meditation, any kind of therapies around on mind-centered um, healing, uh, and then also a body practice that speaks to our nervous system to go in line with our um, with our psychological intelligence. So we're talking mostly about our brain and how we categorize things. There's a base part, there's a spiritual centered part that can kind of work hand in hand to balance some of these things out. Um, and like uh, Il said earlier, the emotional intelligence that comes into that. So if we have body awareness, emotional awareness, spiritual awareness, we can help to mitigate some of those factors to help out our brain so our brain's not doing all the work, you know, if we can calm our nervous system and so we're not functioning high anxiety or we can um, just have that regular practice of consistent, almost like living in meditation so that when we're confronted with something thing uh we're using that frontal cortex we're not on autopilot we're not we're actually engaged and consciously aware of the decisions we're making the biases that we have and how we're enacting um and and choosing to live from that space so i would offer that up as just some suggestions around what you said because a lot of people who are not neurotypical and we're not using we're not functioning from the same brain space we're functioning from a lot of individual trauma and cultural somatic trauma, and we're not even aware of it. So that's a great point. Thank you so much. That was just like the tip of the iceberg. I'm <laughs> just really digging because there's so much to explore in just what you said on top of just how we actually create bias in general. Yeah, it's passed down. If we look at epigenetics, we can see that the biases that our, that our parents had in the first uh, five years get programmed into our subconscious before we have words to speak about these biases. Babies mm -hmm. uh, at between two and three months know the difference between, um, between black and white skin, and then they attach meaning to it by three years. So they already are being programmed with whatever bias, you know, through we just see it in mice and we see it in humans. So these are these are deep, deep in our subconscious. We don't even have words to speak about them. So when we're talking about uh, using uh, music as narrative, there's there's a whole layer in our nervous system and in our, you know, before our identity forms as little babies that these come back to. And so there's a lot of work to be un unbiasing ourselves and be working through that so there's definitely a lot to look at there but even just getting the greater awareness on it from our you know from our complex brain rather than our our systems um is just to yeah. start yeah that was awesome yeah thank you for that and that's a perfect segue into the music because i think that it's it's uh i can't wait so all right Fat track L7, uh, we turn it over to you for a live form. Right. Um, just to dive into uh, a little of the narrative of this project and, and how we got 
uh, how we named it, Crates of Vintage Dreams, right? And uh, kind of diving into the songs as well. So um, the Crates of Vintage Dreams uh, idea um, is really talking about reaching back in order to push forward, right? So when we're talking about like generational trauma, uh, especially within the black culture, so much of our narrative starts at slavery. So that becomes your reality within the ways that you view the world. You see yourself first as a slave, and then you see yourself as a free citizen. So like within um, this project, um, we really dived into um, the ideas of what it might have been before. And then some of it actually has some like historical references within African culture, more uh, also this culture, um, really diving into like some of the Native American ideas uh, within uh, shamanism and uh, practicing like uh, spirituality. So the first track that we have on here that we uh, started the project out is called Stardust. And it's really just talking about us all being from Stardust and you know being created from that and being here on this earth plane uh, and uh, kind of the history and the ideas behind it. So I talk from a spirit, the spirit is Acuna Black and uh, Acuna Black is just the representative of, um, you know, blackness and the ideas of blackness uh, within, you know, the United States. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. Can you hear okay? Everybody can hear, hear, hear us okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. We are good, yep, we are, thumbs up. Yeah. Uh. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Stardust, stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Stardust, stardust. Uh, I'm the spirit of Cunha Black. Dark like the universe in deep space. The color of rooted soil. Dark like black oil. Truth dripping, trickling down like fabricated lies. Polluted by chemtrail skies. Cross T's and dotted their eyes. Seeing within the clear vision, our future. Remembering your niggas, they might shoot you. Execute you. Label you crook. Stigmatize your soul. Leave you half shook. They left a virus in our mainframe. History they took. Never written in a book. Elevate your next narrative within the hieroglyphic text. Written is our next. Seeping out the pores. In King before you know this, own this ancient civilization of the greats, the oldest. We travel within the tribal of the ciphers of our necks. We travel within the tribal of the ciphers of our necks. We travel within the tribal of the ciphers of our necks. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Stardust, stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Within the vision, we the children of stardust. Stardust, stardust. Stardust. <laughs> no more? Uh, yeah, we're gonna go into no more. Um, I'll do little kind of clips on each track before we go into it. Thank y'all, bless up. Thank you for the hands. Um, so before we go into it, so uh, same with No More. So No More is just the encourage people to know their roots, uh, know that you're an individual and nobody was made like you. And within that, just embracing yourself. Um, so yeah, they don't make them like us no more. Uh, featuring So Long. Yeah. Uh, uh, hands up, hands up. Hands up, uh, let's, let's, let's ride, let's ride, ay, 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 uh, let's, let's, let's ride, ay, uh, let's ride, ay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, ay, they don't make a lie of us no more, never made a lie of us before, yeah, you're dealing with the real hardcore, yeah, you're dealing with the real hardcore, they don't make a no more? Nah. Cause they never really did. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
yo, yo. How we live in this world of lies, everybody in the skies, looking at the friendly skies, living in denial, judgment in their heart. Everyone's on trial, trying to live a little. We just made it past the riddle, lead us up like him or what we trying to be the noble keepers, hoping that the spirit guides might seek us, asking for a preacher, calling for a teacher, knowing that the systematic traps might eat you, knowing how to live a life, maybe have to sacrifice, Jesus lived a humble life, who did it to? I'm just trying to be a man of a little virtue, I'm just trying to be a man of a little virtue, but, uh, they don't make a lot of us no more, never made a lot of us before, they you dealing with the real hardcore, they you dealing with the real hardcore, they don't make a lot of us no more. Uh, uh, no, uh, cause they never really did, yeah. let's go, let's go, let's, 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 they don't make a lie in us no more, never made a lie in us, yeah, you dealing with the real hardcore, yeah, you dealing with the real hardcore, no, uh, uh, no, cause they never really did, yo, let's, let's, yo, check it. Open up and let it go, elevate the mental, spiritual insight, not fundamental, breathe the life in the lungs, speak it to the future, have new life, let life pursue you, follow to the next spot, reaching in the past, we ain't you like the pharaoh, you can see it in the math, I'm talking about the cipher, circle of life, we made it out our next snap, call that good life, they don't make a like us no more, never made a like us before, yeah, you feel it with the real hardcore, they feel it with the real hardcore, they don't make a like us no more. Nah, cause they never really did. Right on. So yeah, that's Crates of Vintage Dreams, fat track on all the production, I think except for the exception of maybe one track. Okay. Two last couple twin brother uh, on guitar and then uh, Rain did the last one for sure, my boy Tyler. Uh, we did, we did uh, Call of Life with Mike Ward. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of collaborations on this project, musician-wise and artist-wise. So we have Molina Speaks on here. If you don't know him, go check him out. Mike Word, if you don't know him, go check him out. Um, we had Rain. Uh, she's a dope producer from a crew called The Elementals, and she produced the last track on our, on our album. Um, and this next one that we're going to do, I actually did with Molina Speaks, uh, called Crates of Vintage Dreams, uh, the title of the album. And the idea of it is to just really pay homage to those who have passed on, our ancestors. Uh, I had a, a few homies that have passed on, uh, one of them being friends of me and Trax, his name is Marcus Aurelius, and uh, another one being Zen, and um, uh, another brother named Popeye. So all of them were artists, all of them musicians. And it's homage to them and just the previous ancestors and people who have come before us. So, uh, Crates of Vintage Dreams. Yeah, hands up, hands up, hands up, bring it to him. Yeah, hands up, hands up, hands up, bring it to him. Yeah, uh, hands up, hands up, hands up, bring it to him. Hey, hands up, y'all. Yo, Worth out the rhythm, so dripping off from since the 80s. Speaking a language of the job, I survive with this lady who birthed kings out of poppers, up rockers, revolution non stoppers, fuck coppers. A public enemy, clock around the neck, time thought deep in the motion. West coasting, coma toasting, high chiefing in the studio. My dream, it seems manifest on a beat in a mic, grip tight, ready to set flight. What? And reminisce to the gods of our past, to stay homage real fast. Mark, I'm a big sound. Papa kept his fist in the air. Battle anyone to show that he cared. We talk about this life that we live. Everything that we give, just a dream. Hands high. Paying homage to the gods on the vinyl and the beat. Hip hop, it don't stop. Hip hop, it never stop. Gonna for the B boys to make some noise for hip hop. You can't stop. Hip hop, it don't stop till your body rock. It's crazy when your future starts. Feel like your past, all the dreams in your life flash by. Yo, I'm a soldier that's been torn apart and pieced back together. Yeah, I made it through the battle of the stormiest weathers. Give me a sword, shield, cross to overcome. I seen children and grown men killed by bullets and guns. They glorify the murder and death of my fam. Break us up, beat us down, it's a part of the plan. I look towards the eye and eye to give us sight. My general Generations brainwashed and I own the fight. We got caught in America, skin on our souls like crooks. The children of a skit look at open books. Suburbia in America being halfway shook. 
and the kids and the others get jacked up. You lost the ball way. Forgot the fundamentals. Get on our knees and pray. Decided we wanted to break it off and do it all our way. So, like money to tax collectors, somehow we pay. Hits, ha. Paying homage to the gods on the vinyl and the beat. Hip hop, it don't stop. Hip hop, it never stop. Tell them for the B boys to make some noise for hip hop. It can't stop. Hip hop, it don't stop. To your body, rock. It's crazy when your future starts. Fit I like the past. All the dreams in your life flash by real fast. Yeah, it flashed by real fast, y'all. It flashed by real fast. It flashed by real fast, y'all. It flashed by real fast. Yeah, that hip hop, it don't stop. Hip hop, it never stop. It keep going. All right. What are we trying to? I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I never sound like that on. Zoom calls. I don't know what's happening. And Fat Track, I'm gonna need you to produce my future Zoom calls. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, no problem. You guys hear it okay, right? Yeah, cool. yeah. Oh, wow. It was incredible. It was great, perfect. Cameras too, like it just looked amazing. <laughs> Bless. Thank you. Oh, so, um, next track that we're gonna do um, is dedicated to Nina Simone. Uh, we dedicated this track to Nina Simone just because of the work that she's done for all those years, you know what I'm saying, within uh, the revolution, um, but also as a creator and just being somebody who battled depression and battled like all sorts of uh, layers of abuse, you know, in relationship space. So um, this next track that we're going to be uh, sharing, dedicated to Nina Simone and um, we took pieces of her songs kind of meshed them in there within lyrics. So, Nina's on. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Breathe in, breathe out. Dream big, dream out. Come on, everybody in a place to be. Everybody in a place to be. Yo, breathe in, breathe out. Dream big, dream big. Yo, I can feel it in the spirit, hear it in the beat. She the conscious of the soul to make the middle feel unique. She the vow to make the mind connect the chakras to the soul. Translation of the spirit that gets trapped up in the flow. I speak and told the story, told the future holds and knows the well. I can tell up in the spell, the message told the soul to fail. Falling on a mission, in a mission of the play. Put the fuel on display, see what she did today. I know, I know, mind gone, slipped out of space. Walking in the spirit, calling in my happy place. I talk the gas face with all the paper chase. In a one man bed, yo, you keep your own pay. So I don't need a mole halfway home. Take me to the water set on that. I'm told black is the color of my true love and hell. Little story. Little girl blue fortune tell stories there. Black is the color of my true lovers. Yeah, breathe in, breathe out, dream big, yo. Hands up like everybody in the place to be. Put your hands in the air where our eyes can see. Uh, everybody in a place to be. Put your hands in the air where our eyes can see. Now move left, right, left, right, left, right, left, yo. They told me dreams manifest from old life pain. We try to be great in the gladiator games. Power rain flames standing on the back of our children. Willing to be great if the closed minds listen. Break the tradition. Fish for Atlantis. The children of the no indigo new planet. Gotta wait your turn, transcend new standards. The people break the boundaries. The system can't stand it. All of the fallen, stalling the greatness. Artificial intelligence. Who the fake is? Lightning shining out the eyes of the future. Feel pain in your chest, fight it in the moment, take another breath, yeah. Now breathe in, now breathe out, now breathe in, now breathe out, come on. So long, need a moan, halfway home, take me to the water center, man. I'm told. Black is the color of my true lover's hair. Little girl blue for to tell stories there. Little girl blue for to tell stories there. Black is the color of my true lover's hair. Breathe in. Breathe out, dream big, dream not up. Uh, now everybody in a place to be. Put your hands in the air where well, our eyes can see. Now everybody in a place to be. Put your hands in the air where well, our eyes can see. Now move left, right, left, right, left, right, uh, yeah. Call and response, y'all. <laughs> 
Say I like it. I like it. Say I love it. I love it. Say I need it. I need it. That realness. That realness. Say I like it. Say I love it. Love it. Say I need it. I need it. That realness. That realness. That realness. That realness. That realness, that realness, that realness, that realness. Yeah. Nina Simone. So, everybody, everybody, black body, black body, black body, black body, black body, black body, yo. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, you want to do that one? Yeah, we'll close it out. I think this is going to be our last one. Um, it's called Time Traveler. And like the idea of Time Traveler uh, was really don't, uh, jump into like, uh, general trauma uh, that's within the black community. Um, it really dives into all the symptoms and the things that have been systemically put in place uh, that make us kind of fall into these pit holes and like these uh, cycles that continually happen within the black community. So like the idea of the track was to really get folks to like really dig into themselves, go into their past, learn who they are. And the reason why it's called the time traveler is because I'm of the belief if you're always present, you can go into the future or to the past as long as you're in the moment, you know what I'm saying? So it's also diving into the, uh, the ideas of community coming together uh, outside of color lines. You know, the, the second verse kind of uh, chimes into that. So as you listen to the second verse, I'm really talking about us all being one. So, uh, Time Traveler. Yo, Time Traveler. Shout out to the Beatles. Time, time. <laughs> the Beatles. Yo, time Traveler. Yo. Say that. You can get the message clear. I'm just saying, hey, hey. we playing with a frabble design. Dynamite out of sight, Joe boy in your mind. It ain't no mystery, they hide the history. Ascended king, needle in the arm, made a god of fame. It took off dreams. We search for the glory of fame. When you live, all you got is your name. You sustain. We made it out the rhythm of life. Kinetic science and alignment, even God got a price. Breathless elevation, mind growing life. Hands gripping transformation in love with the night. Mind getting clear from the pain of your past. Shaking from the echoes of the loud gun blast. Time traveler, a cunha black still living. Mind still dripping. Breaking on the walls of tradition. Becoming locked in with the gods. Brothers opposition, us kings look odd, but we push evolution to life. Classic stagnant stolen mind as my out of breath. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine. Oh, and past the window, hey, watching all the time fly by. Looking out pain's windows, yeah. We looking at the window pane, watching all the time fly by, time fly by. Oh, we pushing out the window pane, watching all the time fly by. Looking past pain, yo. Time and line, life survivor. On a mission for the cause, I embrace all my flaws in the land of the dogs. Off the calls, got us all caught up off our sin. Playing out like Trent in the battle of the skin color. Brother from another mother, still call you my kin. Closer than a friend, looking past external, they my friend. You try to hurt you, use your weaknesses to burn you, laugh to hurt you. But they'll never learn the real you. Blind can't see, two brilliance in the eyes, front of the sky. While we fly, 5280 high. Why did not a fact, wisdom, all the facts up? They fear make the weak mind stay clear. Open up for the ones to know. We elevate the heart so the spirit can grow. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine bright. Concepts still shine, shine. Oh, we pushing past the window. Hey, watching all the time fly by. Pushing past the window, yeah. We pushing past the window, pain. Watching all the time fly by. Yo, like, yo, 
They trying to take your soul, don't let them. They trying to take your mind, don't let them. We looking past the high life, looking for that Christ life. No, can't let them. We pushing past the window, hey. watching all the time fly by, looking past planes windows. <laughs> Yeah. I know. I need an applause track. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Woo! Nice work. Nice. Great job. Thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Did you want to do uh, face to face? Best Zoom call ever. <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> totally. Agreed. Forget that. Forget that Hamilton one. Oh. <laughs> I think Jack wants to do one more. Yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. And then, so um, real quick, I was thinking for the, for the workshop, are you guys okay if we all do it together instead of breaking out into two groups? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Is that cool? Yeah. I think we have a small enough group. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. And then, after, yeah, but you guys go ahead, play another. That'd be awesome. All right. Uh, last track that we're going to do. I haven't, huh? Which one are you going to do? Let's do Bullet the Blue Sky. Oh, okay. Let's do bullet to bullet. All right, so the last track we're gonna do is more art based. Uh, we're, we're gonna do raise us up, but just to be honest with y'all, I haven't done it in a while. And I always set it up, so I'll do. It. <laughs> so I'm gonna do vulnerability. To Come on, mess it up. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm just mess it. Yeah, I, man. I, that's no, you know what happened. Yeah. Rain from the Elemental Project. Um, it's a three piece female production group. They're phenomenal. Um. She she held on to this beat for our, our album for about three years. <laughs> yeah. It took us about four years to do the album, but she held on to it for me and said, Rain, please, please don't send it up to nobody else. Like, I want to use it as the last last song on our album. Like, it, it, it's really big, you know? you know? So she did this. Shout out to Rain. And she allowed me to mix it and, and put, my, uh, put my little touch on it. Let's do it. Raise us up. Raise us up. Raise us. Raise us up. Hey. I look through the eyes of my capability. Read out all the hate and peace for more. I saw that I can hear you by the shore. Promise shouting out black power. James Brown got so better let them know. Be the root direct. This elevated greater than a lot embedded in the after so close sight out of out of flight for the one who never stood to vital is my word too still I push through try to take my breath beat it out my chest told me to confess to my blackness who I am the not thinking in the plot a nigga I am not hating so they fought a genius full of thought hating just to see just to put some push and get into the meat Maybe not a word I know, so only thing I could do is grow. Maybe not a word I know, so only thing I could do is grow. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah. Martin had a dream of sight of seeing the shine from trying to make us. Martin had a dream of sight Trying to cuss. Martin had a dream of sight of seeing the shine from trying to wake us. Wake us up. Wake us. Wake us up. Wake us. Yeah. Fight to see the light. Take a very mind. See the jab is organized on time. Keep them all the power. One percent of cowards elevate the thought. Tight for the blind. Elevate the mind with knowledge of self. Knowledge is health. Knowledge is wealth. Open in the eye. Just shock. Might shock ya. New insight for the flight channel surfing. I see new capability, no mystery. Teacher history, super slavery. We were kings, elevate vision out of dreams. What we see for the mind sight glow going. Everybody know we elevate and all of us still know and raise us up. Just raise us up. Yeah, yeah. Raise us. Uh, yeah. We 
still living. He's still giving. Yo, Martin had a dream of Sada Cena, so I'm not the trying to wake us. Martin had a dream of Sada Cena, so I'm not the trying to wake us. Martin had a dream of Sada Cena, so I'm not the trying to wake us up. Wake us, raise us, wake us, get us on up, raise us up. Uh, yeah. Raise us, raise us, wake us up. Uh, Martin had a dream, a side of seeing the sun. Not trying to wake us up, not trying to what? Martin had a dream. Come in with that 6-8. I love it. notes yeah. of our album we have like i think 16 tracks on that album so mm -hmm. you know if you want to hear it in totality uh go ahead and check us out on all the platforms we're on youtube itunes spotify uh Pandora, Tidal, Tidal. Whatever. yeah you can check us out on whatever you listen to uh that album specifically and track has beeps on uh, all those platforms as well right beat production so you know go listen <laughs> phenomenal Oh man, yeah, and we'll share out the link too um, to to everybody. So that's yeah, that was phenomenal. Well, so what? Are, yeah, why do do you want to jump into kind of the workshop? Like, what do you do? You want to just yeah. walk us through a little bit of that, and we'll we'll kind of all work together here. And um, yeah, I'm excited about this. Right on. Um, so uh, I'll start us out, and then we'll tra we'll transition the track. Um, so the idea okay. is. If you have paper, please go get some. If you don't have a pen, or you can do the chat. Or you can do the chat. We can do chat, actually. That's not a bad way to do it, actually. I didn't even think about that. You do paper, you can do chat. Me, personally, I'm a paper person. I need paper to write. I do write on my phone sometimes, but I feel like the connection to the words that you're going to say, in my personal opinion, is more in power uh, when you write it, you know? And then you can go back and reflect on it. But let's use the chat to like maybe share out some of our ideas that we come up with. So as you're writing with the paper, um, I'm gonna ask that you put some of your ideas that you write into chat. Okay, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. So the first thing within what we're doing is we're really building out our own personal narratives. So the idea around it is to really think of who you are, the world see as things like that so the first question uh that i want you to kind of meditate on is you think i am so i want you to write that question on the top of your on the top of your page you think i am and then yeah let me get it thank you and then within that i want you to close your eyes for a little bit everybody kind of close your eyes I want you to get a little bit of time to really kind of reflect on this. Now, what I'm really wanting you to think about are not the ways you see yourself, but the ways the world may perceive you, right? The ideas that people have put onto you that aren't true, uh, the things that people may have said about you that aren't true. And I want you to really think about those styles of things first, right? You think I am, right? So you could do this in a variety of different ways. Uh, you can write it in a poem. You can write it as a, a statement or a letter to yourself, kind of a chance to kind of free write this. I don't want you to overthink it. I want you to write the first things that come to your mind, right? I want you to activate your right brain. 
So the first question, you think I am. All right, I'm gonna give you about two minutes. Track is gonna play some instrumentals in the background while you guys are, uh, while y'all are writing this out. And um, then we'll go ahead and chime back into the next question. So the first one, you think I am. Go. What are the ideas that people have put onto you that aren't your own? seconds and then it'll be a full two minutes all right I'm gonna have you wrap up whatever you just wrote, you think I am. Um, and the reason why we start with that is just because it goes back into the root of uh, unconscious bias, right? Who are the first ones to teach us lessons? Most of the time when we're learning the lessons, we learn it from our parents on top of that. And then, you know, we, we get in our friend groups, our social groups, all these ideas that we attach onto our own identity. Uh, we don't, sometimes don't get a chance to really think for ourselves. So we have people put labels on us, ideas on us. If we don't challenge those ideas, it becomes our truth, right? That's why it's such an important thing to push your own narrative. So the next thing I'm gonna uh, have you write is I am, right? In hip hop, I am is an important statement, right? I am is important in the Bible. I am the great I am. I'm the beginning, I am the end, right? You starting to manifest uh, your truth, your reality, the ways you see yourself. Uh, this dives into hip hop, right? Hip hop is very braggadocious, right? <laughs> Hip hop is always gonna tell you who they are, right? Unapologetically a lot of the time, and you may not agree with it, but it's still their truth, right? So right now, I want you to really think about who you are, what are the things great about you that make you who you are that nobody else has, and what are the things that make you brilliant uh, within your creation, within who you are as an individual? I just want you to kind of dive into your greatness. So within this one, um, be braggadocious. Don't, uh, you know, don't hold back. Everybody know who you are. You know, be a lion. Let your chest out. <laughs> so I am uh, two minutes. Uh, I want you to write it in a poem. It's a free write. Uh, you can write it as a rap. You can write it as a letter to yourself, however you choose. Um, but I am. <laughs>
little bits if you're not done writing just put a pause on it you can always come back to it uh, and that's one thing I'll say as well like everything that we're currently writing you don't have to have a finished composition you don't have to finish anything like these are things that I'm really encouraging you to go back to right and write yourself and you know if you don't journal already I encourage you to figure out some ways to journal get some free time just to let your mind go free um, the next uh, transition is um, really taking ownership of who you are and realizing that even though the world may put burdens on you, may tell you what you should do, you still make the choice of what you want to do within your life, right? So the next one is to be, all right? I choose to be. And within that one, I want you to really think about right now in the moment where your spirit is at. What is it you choose to be? How is it you choose to be? How do you choose to be present? You know, are you uh, in an optimistic mindset? Are you not? And if not, why? You know, explore that within your writing. Um, but really think about what it is you are choosing to be right now in the moment, right? I want you to think in the moment right now. So um, I choose to be, same thing. We're gonna go ahead and give you two minutes on I choose to be and write it however you choose, a rap, a poem, a letter to yourself, um, you can write a list. I don't really care how you do it. Just make sure it's creative. Do we no longer get a beat? I miss the music. <laughs> Y'all are on mute in case you didn't know if that was intentional or not. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you sitting there vibing. I was like, where's, where's our reggae beat, bruh? <laughs> <laughs> 
I choose to be, we don't get music. Oh, <laughs> oh man, hold on. You didn't hear the y'all beat? Been, y'all been on mute. Well, yeah, yeah, you've been on mute the oh, entire time. Oh, shoot, sorry. <laughs> you've been on mute. Big on, big on, hey, two minutes. Two, two minutes. minutes. All, right, all right, all right. Get your vibes. You got another two minutes. All right. <laughs> Me and my twin brother, we did this beat. I just style reggae hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> on mute the whole time. <laughs> Hey man, I enjoy uh, working with you, Sam. Thank you, bro. Like it's been, a, it's been, a, it's been a fun ride, man. We gonna keep doing more business. You know what I mean? Thank you. wrap up that last one and um so so you have context of what we're doing right now you wrote a variety of different little sections of a verse any of those things could either go into like either a verse or uh you can go ahead and write separate verses depending on how ever you wrote it you know i don't know exactly where you're going with your writings reason that we uh really want you to explore the right brain um uh creation mindset is just because it really takes you out of the boundaries. A lot of the time, the left brain is logic, and the, uh, and the left brain keeps you in the confines of uh, a lot of structure. You start questioning yourself. I don't think I'm that good at this. You know, the thing you to the bad creation, it really relates to your left brain a lot of the time. And like, when we ask that you free write, we give you a little bit of time to do that so that you're not questioning as much. You're doing whatever first comes to your mind. Me as a creator, um, when I'm working with track, I usually just do whatever I do in the studio, right? I'm not really like overthinking it. I'm like the first things that come to my mind, I vibe with, I'll lay it out and then come back and edit it later sometimes if I need to. So that's been the best ways for me to create just because I feel like when I think about it too much, it's not personally, it's different for everybody, but personally, uh, it's not really true to my spirit in the moment, you know? So, um, and with that, the, the artist producer relationship that's mm-hmm. been missing, you know, for now, you know, since the internet, and the, you know, the internet is not a problem, but the artist producer relationship, you know, being one on one in the studio, know, in, the studio yeah. in, in, in the same room, like right now, y'all don't know, I don't have everything in my house, and we're upstairs, and it's so hot. Like, I turn the fan out so you can hear it better, but you know, that's no excuse, but you know what I'm saying? Like, this right here is an experience that we're both sweating. <laughs> like, I'm literally sweating. <laughs> He's sweating. Like, but you know, it's as, a glow. as long as, long as the energy is there, we, we're good. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that's what's missing within uh, um, within uh, everything, just collaboration. I think a lot of people are so uh, one-sided, one-minded, where they just want to, you know, they're, they're, they're biased towards themselves, where it's like, you know what, or they you know, they have a bias towards other, other um, working with other people. With me, it, it, as long as you have the right energy and the right uh, synergy and the right, you know, if we build a relationship, I think that's what, that's what matters the most. So, sorry to 
No, no, that's, 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 why yeah, that's, that's not know. digressing at all. That's right on point. And it goes back into what we're talking about when we're talking about biases and really how do we get over them. It's communication. It's, I don't know, it's really getting outside of the ideas and really getting to that interpersonal space. And that's a lot of our work as musicians, as artists, as creators, as facilitators, as educators. Um, you know, the genius of what we do is being able to connect an idea to somebody else's reality. And um, we take that for granted. It's a skill. And uh, being, being able to do that cross, you know, racial lines, gender lines, um, you know, identity lines. Those are things that, you know, we all have to really kind of embrace. So uh, last one. Last one. This one, um, I actually um, based this off of Octavia Butler. Uh, it's based off of yeah. her um, journal entry. So she had a journal entry. I usually have it. I give it to kids usually when I do it or adults. Um, but within her journal entry, it, she wrote it on the back of her journal. And she, wanted, she wrote out all the things that she wanted to accomplish in her, her life. And all the things she wanted to do is from being a best-selling uh, writer to starting her own uh, art foundation, uh, supporting young black kids in her, in her community, uh, to like providing her mother with a house. All those visions she accomplished before she had passed away. And when you look at the back of her journal, she started out a journal. Um, and then as you go through it, she, she finishes out. Uh, finishes out the journal entry, so be it, see to it, so be it, see to it. So she walked in faith and everything that she was pursuing. So right, right now, I want you to title the first, uh, your last entry is I Shall Be. And I want you to think about the things that you want to accomplish, whether it be on a personal level, a relationship level, on a career, I, I, you know, any, any direction you choose to go with an I Shall Be. Um, I want you to really think about the things that you want to manifest in the near or far future and the things that uh, you want to see come into fruition within your life. Um, even, on a, even on a societal level, you know, like if, if you see yourself contributing to the change uh, in some of the crazy chaos that's happening right now within your skill set, your gift, um, you can apply that into it. Uh, once again, you could write it as a poem. You could write it as a rap. You could write it however, a letter, um, an entry, however you choose. But I want you to think about two minutes writing, I shall be. What are the things that you want to uh, accomplish uh, in the future, in the near or far, far future? Uh, two minutes. So if you haven't finished, find a good stopping spot. We're gonna let the beat ride out. And then we're gonna share out. 
and then we're gonna go to track. So we're gonna have, we're gonna give an opportunity for everybody to share some of the things that they have written, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and um, go into the production side. All right. So we went through a little bit of a journey um, around self-narrative, uh, starting with uh, the ideas of people may think of us, defining who we are for ourselves, talking about who we choose to be in the moments, and uh, thinking of the things that we want to uh, pursue and push for in the future, I shall be. Um, we actually have a, like a variety of some uh, other writing workshops that kind of really dive into like uh, more of the ideas that people put on to us. Um, but this one would be a good one just because it really takes, uh, it really gives the uh, person the opportunity to kind of explore their own self-identity and to kind of express that within poetry, art, creativity. So uh, I wanted to see who uh, is interested in sharing. You can share all your pieces or you can share one of the ones that you um, resonate with the most. But uh, yeah, I, I want to open it up. Uh, to any volunteers who would openly like to share uh, what they currently created. Um, I'll share what I choose to be. Um, I choose to be mindful and open to learning from others to help myself grow as a person. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so I got a question. Uh, why do you feel like uh, it actually resonated with you most? Um, because I'm actually going through some things right now, a career change potentially, a potential move, so many different things. And with the coronavirus happening, not really being able to connect with people on a level that I used to be able to connect to people with, things have been really kind of hard for me. So I've kind of started looking inward on how I can kind of help myself to become more mindful to these situations and how I can help myself grow so that when I do finally get settled in a place, I will be settled with most of the things going on internally, if that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I feel like that's kind of where we're at right now. We're all trying to figure out our pivot, you know, and some of us may have adapted a little quicker than others, but like really like thinking about the choices we make within that is, is an important thing. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you sharing. Yeah. I appreciate everything you guys have shared with us today. This has been great. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, anyone else who, who's our next <coughs> volunteer to uh, share, share their uh, brilliance? All right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. This was hard, man. It's like, I mean, this was hard. Um, so I guess I, <laughs> I, I'll do the I am one maybe. Um, the, I'll use like I, <laughs> I am intelligent in my own opinion and funny because of others. I love that. Thank you. And um, what made you, uh, what, what did I am resonate for you? Why did it resonate for you? Um, because it, well, it, it's, because I, I also saw you post earlier this week about the, you think I am, I think I am, like that, that disparity is, an int it's interesting. It sort of got my mind thinking, because there, there can be quite a stark difference a lot of times. Right. And, but, but, you know, me thinking about, well, like, am I who I am because of because of what other people think I am? You know what I mean? Like, do I do I take what they think I am and sort of layer that into my own identity and start to believe that oh, I am that, or or am I who I am because I define that for myself? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. I, like one of the things I find with young people, it, it's fun, man. Like. I, uh, I asked them, like, what makes the clothes they wear cool? Like, what makes Jordan's cool? Or what makes, like, uh, the style of dress cool? And I said, did you define that yourself? 
and they'll be always, yeah, yeah, I had to find it. And I was like, so it's not because of the marketing that's happening on Instagram, the things, you know, the music videos that are telling you, you know, and like all of us have those programs, you know, I feel like all of us are working through that. And I think that for me personally, I, it makes me question what is me and what is like something put on to me, you know? Thank you, man. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. Anyone else? I'll share a couple of mine. Awesome. So um, I am someone who loves fiercely and not flowerly. Mm. Um, and I choose to be and will and always shall be a connector and a human bridge between people. Mm. No, it's, it's, important. it's the most important it's right important. now. It's one of the most important things right now. What made you resonate with the, the bridging of perspectives within people? Like, what made you really uh, go in that direction with the I choose to be? I just, um, I, I, I've always been interested in anything I haven't personally experienced. Um, you know, I come from a small town. I'm an only child. Everyone I knew grew up in the same I did. And so everything from oh my God, you have a sibling. What's that like to, you've traveled or you have a different skin color than me, which is completely different experience, or you grew up urbanly um, to just, I, I just, anything that's unlike my own experience, I gravitate towards. And when I know that I can put people together, I want to. That's beautiful. You're hungry to learn. You're hungrily, hungrily to get a uh, perspective, it sounds like. So we have time for one more, and then we're turning it over to track. Do we have anybody else uh, that would like to share before we uh, turn over to the production? I'll go. Nice. Is it me? Yeah. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna do all of it. I think it yeah. works. Yeah. So, you think I'm weak. You think I'm broken. You think I'm sweet and so soft-spoken, but I am ancient. I'm pure divinity. Look in my eyes and see infinity. So I choose patience. I choose humility. And I stay grounded inside tranquility. I live my purpose with vulnerability. Keep my heart open to possibility. And I shall be what I shall be with all acceptance to all of me. And I shall be what I shall be with all acceptance to all of me. Uh, that's awesome. Can we uh, record that? <laughs> I was trying to write those chords. I was trying to write those chords. <laughs> On that last track, I did. Oh, the I did last record one. Oh, man. Wait, I did you record didn't put it. it on anything. <laughs> yeah, I did record. Oh, for sure. I did record that for later, for sure. Yeah, we and can, I should have. Can be straight from the known. workshop. Straight from the workshop. I should have known from all the guitars. The produces. <laughs> that was wonderful. Oh my gosh, I should have known by all the guitars on your wall. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I write songs all day. Yeah, <laughs> all I love it. Amazing. Thank you for the space to share. Thank you. Thank all of you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jackson. Yeah, thank y'all for participating in that uh, in that writing prompt. Um, you know, I always encourage writing. I feel like it's therapeutic, the way of like releasing and getting uh, all the heaviness that we carry on a daily basis off. Uh, I know some of y'all don't consider yourselves poets or even like singers or rappers, but I feel that like it's just expression. So the more that we express ourselves genuinely and truly, the more we get. Um, with that being said, I'm uh, turning it over to my man Fat Track, who, who has the fat beats. Yeah, so uh, uh, thank you for having me again. Um, it was, it's been a real pleasure working with you guys. Uh, I'm going to break down this beat that we did, uh, the Nina Simone. Um, it's crazy because, you know, normally, uh, when I'm in the studio or on my back couch, and, you know, I'm having like, maybe like a few beers, I'm winding down after a day of work, and uh, I, uh, I go through a stack of vinyl like about this big, or even bigger, and 
it takes me a good three to four hours to actually find something, to find something that I would love to sample um, and to, to try and make it into a, uh, a new creation um, and put my own touch to it. Uh, Turquoise, maybe you know, like, you know, a, a lot of computer uh, programs, they, uh, they have quantized and they say yep. it. When quantized I'm, and humanized. Yeah, it, you know, I, I produce beats. I don't use any quantized. I don't use any of this beat machines. Um, very seldom, I'll put it like that way. Maybe if I want to get those little hi hats that I can't really get a real drummer to play this extra fast, I might do it like that. Uh, maybe if I'm feeling off the day and my snare's not right on the two or four, I might use it. Um, but majority of the times, every single one of my beats, I don't have any quantized. Um, it, I try and give it as, as much humanly uh, uh, feel as I can. So my drums are off, my sample chopping is off, um, and you know it, it normally takes me about you know maybe four hours, three hours to find a sample off of vinyl. And I, I go through, um, and, and a lot of people get this, this stigma about me as a hip hop producer that I um, that I just listen to hip hop only, and that's not the case for me. I listen to everything. I listen to, to, to a lot of vinyl. I go back in the past. Um, I, you can find me at the record store. I, I ask my wife, hey, drop me at the record store and I'll be there for, you know, five hours. Go do you. I have no issues with that. Uh, um, you know, I really enjoy it. I like getting my fingers dusty. I like listening to new music um, and creating new music off of something that you, you would never, you know, like this album cover right here. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? This is a, it's Sim Wilson Jr. with the John Howard Caravan, recorded live at the Faith Tabernacle Church in the Bronx, New York, right? Yeah. So, you know, I, I was like, okay, so I'm going to play the sample. And when I heard it, I was like, okay. So it's all live, live music. And I'm like, okay. You know, but I have to have patience in order to find something that I can recreate up and here's something I found. Um, here's the original sample. good enough for me i was like yo this is phenomenal this this whole recording it has it has the lows like what you do turquoise with the bass like i always listen to the lows i, I look for the i look for the mids and i also look for the highs and i use uh this beat machine right here um it's an mbc 2500 uh, uh and i sample straight into it off of vinyl into the beat machine and what i do is i'll once i have the sample i'll start chopping it and what I do is I chop in waves. So I'm not sure if you can see this. It's kind of upside down, but can you see the wave? Yeah, the wave, huh? Is it MPC so what? I'm looking at, this is a 2500. Right now I'm on, uh, right that over there. I'm on a 4000 and a an ASR 10. So I went back to the old school, but this one I've used all till now for 13 years straight. All my albums, uh, even Seven's album has been produced off of this main machine. My buttons are breaking on it. Um, I got to push it extra hard to get it to work. But I'm going to go out and um, get it fixed. But, you know, when I did this, when I did this beat, so I, I sampled it in. So I sampled this piece right here. You know, immediately I was like, oh, okay. So I sampled what you heard in the beginning, right? And then I began to chop it up. So my first chop was uh, this right here. 
right? Just that one piece. So I begin to start chopping it up. So I can have, and it's very small. Nope. So essentially what I do is I have all my notes and I start to rearrange them. So I did the, let me see. Right, so that's the main. And as you can tell, what I did was I actually uh, I, I uh, tuned it up. So the original was yeah. down regular. So right, so it's slower. Right, I tuned it up plus one, mm -hmm. and I found that key. So I, I like the vibe of this one a little bit better. Um, you know what I'm saying? So I started with this. Um, normally. What I do is I, I chop up my, my sample first. I get it all across the pads. I figure out a, a different pattern. Like I had it, I had it originally, um, let me see. So, it, it, you know, I can't explain the method to the madness, but I put certain sounds and I found the pattern light. Um, I didn't necessarily start with a sample on this beat. The main thing that I started out with was um, the kick and snare. So I found, uh, you know, when you turn this beat machine on, if you look at it as like a painter, um, they have the easel, right? And they start putting these paints. They don't, you know, they have the colors, but they don't have it on that, on that brown wood. Um, and then they have a blank canvas. I look at it, it's the same way. When you turn this beat machine on, all the pads are blank. And what I normally do is I end up adding those different uh, 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 colors to the pads to add to my, my canvas, to add to my painting. Um, in this case, what I did was I, I loaded up a, a, you know, a kick, which I layered. Well, that's a snare first, my bad, my bad. That's a snare first. The kick was a, so this kick, um, if you can see right here, I know it's upside down, but can you, can you see right there? Uh, a little bit. Let me go over here to the right. You see how it has, let me see. Oh, I'm trying, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying, can you see that? Right there, how it has four different, on the oh, let, me, way. let me see. Is that better? That's probably better. You see right there how it has four different sounds on one? I know it's kind of hard to see, but I stacked four different kicks on this on top patch. Of it. Yeah. So and then um the snare. I stacked two different snares on this pad. I am low and an pad. echo. So like normally what I do, and, you know, and, and, and that's why I go by fast track, right? because I try and make it as fat as possible. I try and make the beat as fast as fat as possible. Um, so I started with the the kick and snare. So I I did a uh, let me see. Uh, right? The hand drummer like that. I'm a hand drummer. And this is my instrument right here. <laughs> then I found a uh, a high hat the drum. So I. Right, so I don't know what's happening. We lost you oh, for like thirty seconds. Right, a little bit lower. Then, then I, what I did was I added in my uh, my sample. So let me try to re replay it real quick. saying so that's the gist that after I added the sample after I did that what I did to it was remember how I told you that I had the uh 
I found the highs, uh, uh, the, 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 the mids and the lows of the sample. So the highs are like the, ooh, and the, the mids are like the drums and, 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 and cer certain points of the vocals, but then there's also a low where, where it's the bass line. Turquoise, you know about the low, the bass, the boom, 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 boom. So like, I listened to the notes in the, uh, in the sample and what it was, was built to this beat machine. Like, I don't know how to play bass, but I'll pay a live basis to play on my stuff. And originally the sample is with the highs. Right? But what I did was I, I took these and, and you'll hear a, a dramatic change when I use a low pass filter so it goes. Cut out the low end. Yeah, the hip hop. <laughs> so I'm using this as my bass line. Ah. So it's basically the low end of the choral. Yeah. The chorus part is what you did. So he's splitting them in the half. It's hard for us to hear it over here, but right. basically there's some, it's the bottom end of that uh, chorus. The sample, the yeah, sample of the choral, the choral sample. Yeah, exactly. So, and that right there is like such a key thing for me. If I can't find a sample, that's fine. I'll stop out and use the highs, but what I'll do is, it, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to a bassist and say, hey, look, you know, my, my boy Keith from the All-Star Opera, hey, can you play a bass line in this? He'll, you know, he'll find the key of, of, the, of the song or like uh, my twin brother when he played the guitars in that last joint that you wrote to um, for this exercise when he, when he was playing guitar, um, you know, I had the sample, but I filtered it out and I took out the filter off the sample and I deleted that whole sample after I had a live uh, uh, pianist or, or, or organist come through and play, my twin brother. and you know, I, that was inspiration for it. Majority of the time, I'll leave, I'll leave the sample in there, um, like this track. So uh, that's just the gist of what I do. It's, it's, it's really trying to, you know, utilize my ear, but also listening to things that I won't normally listen to. Like, I listen to a lot of reggae music now, that's, or other style uh, of music. I listen to a lot of, I have vinyl collection. I don't know if you can tell from here. Big one. Um, but I also have way more vinyl than that underneath my desk. I have way more vinyl in a record bin over here. Um, I actually have to go through all my vinyl. And, and, and if it doesn't have a sample on it, I'm going to go trade it in the wax trash and get, you know, more vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the gist of what I do. So this is the beat, you know, the Nina Simone. I was seven, I saw on the beat in, in the person, and he starts to write on the couch. After he's done writing, step up to the microphone over here behind us, and we record, and that's that's what you hear. So that's I hope that broke it down a little bit of what we do, like you know. Plenty. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, that was amazing. Right on. Yeah. So just so y'all have reference of Fat Track, he doesn't brag on himself too much. I'll brag on him a little bit. But uh, so Fat Track was like one of the first producers to go viral on YouTube. Like him and uh, Booney Mayfield. Uh, oh, yeah, were... Boon, Solomon, Vaughn, right? Yeah, Solomon. You yes. Know? You know? Yeah, I, I, I went, I, that's one of my best friends. You know, wow. I, I met him awesome. uh, by breaking the, up the his monks break did his... They did. Uh, they used one a band I used to be in called the Wandering Monks have a song yeah. called Soul yeah. Purposes and it's it's uh, Solomon's track. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah he's brilliant. He's yeah, a brilliant yeah. producer. It's one of my best friends. Like you know, we used to live together uh, uh, back in the old six to. We have an album out. It's called a uh, Fat Track. Uh, uh, it's called Kingsman because Solomon and I'm David. So King Solomon, King David. Ah, oh, I love and that. It's called the Secret Files of uh, Boondock and Fat Track. We have beats that we put out, uh, we, we created together from 06 to 09. Um, and before I started working heavily with the artist named Marcus, and then eventually working with Seven through um, meeting him, Marcus, um, at a show. So yeah, no, me and Boom, man, that, we're from the same area. We're from Whitefield, Colorado Springs. And you know, I, it's crazy how we met. You know, I, I, I had to go break up their uh, senior gift to their whole, uh, high school <laughs> during our basketball we were rival rival high schools you went yeah. to wide field to mesa ridge and and i, I, I went to rampart in liberty 
Did you? Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah you from the area then? Yeah, yeah, man. Like you know, I broke up his. Um, I didn't know how to break dance for for the life of me, and um, <laughs> went out there and man, when we went to the beach club, you, you know, because I always asked the breaking crew, hey, can you know at the function or the beach club? Like, you remember the function and beach club? Yeah. Like, yeah, like, so they used to break in the middle of the square and stuff. And I used to talk to Eric Alano, who was my, my tattoo artist, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I said, hey, Eric, man, can you can you please teach me a break? I talked to him, and, um, you know, Saul ended up being Melo Spontane. And he, he changed his name to Booney Mayfield because he comes from the Boonies, and Curtis Mayfield is his favorite composer. That's where he stemmed from. And, um, you know, I always told him, I said, bro, you got to get on the NPC. Cause he was using reason, clicking, like looking at the computer, clicking the drums in and clicking it, clicking it. <laughs> MIDI, yeah, MIDI, programming that MIDI. Yeah, yeah, man, that, that, I can tell you boy's story, but uh, yeah, the, <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Like, yeah, thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, he's got videos on beat production online as well. Yeah. So uh, him and Booney are like the first to go viral uh, on there. And they like kind of the format of beat production uh, that is currently on YouTube. Uh, they're the ones that kind of established it. So, the dude's been doing it for a long time. Yeah, before YouTube was famous, it was crazy, you know? I never knew how it was going to go, but I, uh, we just did it from the heart. And, uh, you know, um, you can hear me on some of the videos. Like, I'm going, woo! Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but uh, it's, uh, I learned a lot. I, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have learned how to sample the way that I do. And my boy Ty Law, when it came to filtering, um, you know, you the, the lows and the mids and the highs, like, if it wasn't for that, then I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. And then just my own practice, taking it into account and, and, and really just going through these crates, going through these vinyls um, is really important for me to actually have that, that alone time. Um, whether I'm cooking, I'll, 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 I'll have a stack of vinyl and I'll just start listening because you never know what you're going to find. I always bring, uh, like, I'm in a restaurant, I'm in a far restaurant with my wife. And I might be listening to the Asian music they're playing. Oh, shoot, what is that? And I bust out Shazam yeah. on the phone. I'm walking around the restaurant, you know, holding up my yeah. Shazam. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. you know, I just plug the plug. – I, I still have an iPhone 6, which has the hole where you plug oh, it yeah. in. I can plug it directly to my beat machine, and I'll just create it there. I'm trying to spot it. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. That's well, crazy I, you guys – yeah, I can't think. I mean, it was like legit celebrity status. It's my first mate, like main celebrity on on a Zoom meeting. This is amazing. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you guys! The, no, this was awesome. I, I can't thank you both enough. I can't thank everybody for being a part of this. Um, you know, well, I, I the recording. I'll I'll find a place to put this somewhere so that people can go back and watch it. And yes. what? Yeah, what? What are we? What's next? Um, Fat track and L seven, like what's uh? Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Um, thank you for asking. You know, I have a we're doing an EP with this um with the with the professor from DU that's doing a documentary uh, with this class called Zoomed In from Six Feet Apart. Um, yeah. it, it's gonna be a four or five track EP. Some of those instrumentals that you was writing to in the beginning are you just oh, heard some exclusive on music that's on the project. Like nobody ever heard yeah. that. Uh, a compilation album with various artists that I've uh, reached out to uh, that are willing to work with me. And um, I'm mixing it right now. I have the mastering money, you know, you know, praise the Lord. Thank you for the mastering money. Like I actually paid for a mastering engineer, um, send it off to Atlanta, get it mastered, um, do some analog gear. I'm mixing with analog gear and um, I uh, have a compilation album, it was seven EP. And then I'm also doing um, a series called the way to heaven. Um, I want to help try and save people through the music. And what I'm going to be doing is utilizing uh, scriptures. I have my, my first series is called The Way to Heaven One. And I use the scripture from the Bible. And each um, the title of the song, it says, Verily, Verily, that's, that's track one. I say it's track two. Unto you is track three. He that believes oh, track four. You know, unto me had the everlasting life. So if you, if you listen to the album in order, you vibe with the music, you read the titles, you're also going to get God's word. And, and I'm going to keep going with it. Like way to heaven, way to heaven three, and, and 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 you know, and working with artists like Seven, you know, uh, whenever we can collab, and and we collab frequently, you know, uh, or before yeah. I move, so that's that's those are my goals. Uh, 2020 is gonna be a big year for me. That the compilation and this EP, and uh, just doing more work like this, 
helping out people. And I would love to be, you know, in a, a, an environment where people can actually bang out on the pads and listen to sample. I, I you know, that's what I do with the kids. I'm right. teaching Zoom online. It's a little bit different, but that's that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like uh, me and, uh, and Track are doing a lot of collaboration and work set, workshop spaces. So we're doing summer programming right now um, with a variety of different organizations, Peace Warriors. Um, we have some things coming up with the University of Denver, but also with CU. So like right now, we're just, uh, we're doing a lot of, uh, we're kind of building out this framework of what we're doing around narrative uh, a lot more. Um, and yeah, we have a lot of. Uh, musics that we're about to be releasing right now so it's just constant work um also we do uh we've been doing like private lessons track is doing private lessons on beat production for young people that are interested yep. in actually getting into it um we've been doing a lot of songwriting courses with people like more in depth and like how to actually write songs um and then yeah we've been doing a lot of commercial work as well so we've been doing like uh songs for jingles and Kavita brand, we did a we did yeah. three we did a commercial with them. Yeah, we did a few. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you. Hey, good luck with everything. Um, yeah, let's do this again. Let's, let's do, do it. Yeah. Let's do it again soon because this is fantastic. Fat Track will obviously come visit you in Hawaii or San Diego. <laughs> yeah, hey, come come out. I'll be in Maui. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, be, all right. Come out. I'll, yeah. I'll barbecue for you guys. Like I Done. love the barbecue. Ask seven. Let me come over. We have a. I always ask me, hey man, did you eat? So you know what I mean? It might take a little longer, but you know, it, it'll be good. Right. I promise you, I'll, I'll grill some good. Track will take care of you. He always it'll takes be care worth of it. Yeah. It'll be worth it. Well, awesome. Well, thank you all for being a part of this. Um, I, I really can't thank you enough. I appreciate it. Thanks, Nina, for co-hosting. And yeah. um yeah, everyone take care. Yeah, and you too. enjoy. You well, careful. Thank you. Take care. Thank you for the compliments, and I'm glad you could hear us. All right, you know. Oh, it was great. That was perfect. Sounded great. Was perfect. All right. <laughs> bye, everyone. All right, bye, guys. Later. Thank you, everyone. Peace. Thank you.